In this video, I'm going to derive and apply a numerical solution to the shallow water equations using the kinematic wave approximation. The saint vanon equations describing shallow water flow in one spatial dimension consist of two equations covering conservation of mass and momentum. They can be expressed in full in the form shown here. When the source terms, i.e. the bed slope and friction terms, are much larger than the first three terms in the momentum equation, we can ignore the smaller terms and make what is known as a kinematic wave approximation. The momentum equation thus reduces to S0 equals Q mod Q over K squared. That is, the gravity forces and friction forces are balanced. This approximation implies steady uniform flow. We are going to set up a simple 1D finite difference solution to the kinematic wave approximation for a wide rectangular channel with a known constant bed slope. Note, I've assumed no lateral inflow in this case, i.e. there's no source term on the right-hand side of the continuity equation. First of all, we're going to need to find the conveyance, K. Let's define K in terms of Manning's equation giving us the relationship shown here, where n is Manning's coefficient, a is the cross-sectional area, and r is the hydraulic radius. First, we note that since the channel has a rectangular cross-section, we have a equals the width b times h, where h is the water depth. The hydraulic radius is given by a over p, where p is the wetted perimeter, which in this case is b plus 2h. Going back to equation 2, we can see that the magnitude of Q will be given by the square root of S0 times K, giving us Q equals root S0 over N times A times A over P to the 2 thirds, or Q equals root S0 over NP to the 2 thirds times A to the power of 5 over 3. Rearranging this to get an expression for A in terms of Q, we have A equals alpha Q to the beta where alpha equals n p to the two thirds over root s naught to the power of beta, and beta equals three fifths, or 0 0.6. For simplicity, we'll make a further assumption. Since the channel is wide, the width b is much greater than the depth h, and we can take the wetted perimeter to be simply the width of the channel, i.e. p is approximately equal to b. Next, we note that by applying the chain rule to dA by dt, we can rewrite equation 1 in the form dQ dx plus dA dQ dQ dt equals 0. This is useful because we can obtain an expression for dA by dQ by differentiating equation 3 with respect to Q, giving us dA by dQ equals alpha beta Q to the beta minus 1. Thus, we can rewrite the continuity equation in the form shown here, which incorporates our simplification of the momentum equation. Now, rather than having to solve two equations simultaneously, we have a single equation for the dependent variable q containing derivatives of q with respect to both of the independent variables x and t. We can now set up a finite difference scheme to solve this equation numerically. Before we proceed, let's think about our solution domain. We want to evaluate the discharge over a 2D space-time domain as shown here. We're going to need a grid which covers the domain, and in this case I'm going to choose a rectangular grid with fixed spacing delta x in the spatial dimension and delta t in the time dimension. Thus, for our numerical scheme, we will evaluate q only at points with x coordinate that are multiples of delta x and t values that are multiples of delta t. I'm going to use the notation where a subscript denotes the spatial direction and superscript the time step, i.e. q with a subscript i and a superscript j is the discharge evaluated at point i delta x, j delta t. In order to estimate the derivatives of q with respect to x, 
we'll need to consider points to the right or left of ij, i.e. i minus 1j and i plus 1j. We have three straightforward options for estimating dq by dx. We could use a backward difference approximation, a forward difference approximation, or a central difference approximation. Or we could use any of those approximations evaluated at time step j plus 1. For the time derivative dq by dt, we need to take a forward difference approximation because we always step forwards in time from an initial condition. But this could be at either the ith node, or the i plus 1th node, or even at the i minus 1th node. In this case, I'm going to choose a forward spatial difference approximation, evaluated at time step j plus 1, and a forward time difference approximation, evaluated at node i plus 1. If we now go back to the kinematic wave approximation we derived earlier, we can substitute our chosen approximations to the derivatives. However, we still have our q to the beta minus 1 term to deal with, so we need to make a choice about which value or values of q to use to evaluate that. We usually take some sort of weighted average in cases like this. I'm going to set this up for a case in which we have an initial condition and an inflow condition given at the left-hand boundary, which means our numerical scheme will be sweeping from left to right for the spatial dimension and top to bottom for the time dimension. With this in mind, I'm going to take the mean of the values of q at these two points on the grid. We thus have a discretization of the governing equation, which looks like this. OK, we need to unravel this, so let's multiply throughout by delta t and expand. We have this expression here. Reminding ourselves again, that since at each time step we'll start from the left with a known value, qij plus 1 is known when we apply this equation at a particular grid point. Similarly, because we step in time from j to j plus 1, we've already calculated qi plus 1j when we apply this equation. Thus, the only unknown value is q i plus 1 j plus 1, which appears in two terms. Collecting these together, we have this expression, which can be rearranged to give a single expression for q i plus 1 j plus 1 in terms of parameters with known values. This equation is the basis of our numerical scheme. Remember that we also know that alpha equals nb to the two-thirds over root s naught all to the power of three-fifths, and that beta equals 0.6. We're now in a position to put in some numbers. To find alpha, we'll need to know the width and slope of the channel, and make an assumption about the roughness, i.e. a value of Manning's coefficient. And to define the problem, we'll need the length of the channel, an initial condition, and an inflow hydrograph providing an upstream boundary condition. OK, so here's the problem statement. So, we have B equals 60 metres, the channel length equals 7200 metres, S naught equals 0.01, N equals 0.035, and the initial q equals 57 meters cubed per second. Now we want to know the discharge at 900 meter intervals, so we take delta x to be 900 meters. And I'm going to use a time step of three minutes. Note that the inflow hydrograph is given in intervals of 12 minutes, so we'll have to interpolate between values in the intervals in between to get values for the upstream discharge. Running this through our update equation, we get the following result. The triangular distribution on the left is the upstream discharge, i.e. the inflow hydrograph, 
and the distribution furthest to the right is the downstream discharge. The red distributions in between show how the discharge changes with time at points along the channel where there are grid points, i.e. every 900 metres. This problem is relatively straightforward to set up as a spreadsheet or even to write a bit of code to solve the problem, which is something you might like to do as an exercise to see if you can reproduce the results shown here. Here is all the data you will need to set up a model yourself to solve this problem.